Okay, let's continue with this 305 build. The last time we left off, we were short a lifter. I ordered a set of lifters from Rock Auto, plus next one, so they're in as well. We got the exhaust manifold studs for the uh, exhaust manifolds. They both need studs. And we'll, uh, we'll acquire most of the pieces we need from this. The owner's going to bring some more pieces. We're going to get this all together. On, on top of that, I'm just going to disassemble the transmission. Now, I need to run the intake manifold and some pieces through the hot tank. Well, I don't need to, but I'm going to. So I thought I'd just disassemble the transmission that was out of the car as well. And we're going to, uh, that way I can run the case and the parts through the hot tank at the same time, or just after. Took the pan off and it looks pretty bad, so we'd ordered, uh, we'd ordered a kit for it. Now, we're not going to film this. I'm not a transmission expert and I don't do it every day. But if you want to watch somebody that's really good at this, look up Precision Transmission. I think he's really easy to follow and uh, there's a lot, of good, uh, a lot of good advice in those videos. All right, we're going to put a few parts on here. We just uh, installed the lifter and set the valve, so all 16 um, valves are set and ready to go. So our long block is completed. Now we're going to bolt on the intake manifold. I pulled out some intake manifold bolts and cleaned them up. As well, our, uh, we, our water pump has been painted and it's ready to go on. We're going to install the thermostat when we get the intake on. We got a couple of grommets for the valve covers. This one would be... Uh, 42055, that's for the breather on the passenger side. For the PCV valve, this is a standard uh, product. It's a GB9. We are valve there. We just use AC Delco for the rest. The uh, distributor cap and the rotor, the distributor's coming tonight apparently. We got the thermostat housing over there. We got our pulley here. We got a lot of parts here. We've uh, cleaned up the intake manifold and installed the uh, the tray underneath with this just real quick i bent a couple or i bent this one we uh didn't put these back in the original location plus you can turn them um, 180 degrees and they'll bite back in we also use loctite when we put them in so we cleaned everything up and reinstalled that pan and we're uh going to get ready to install the intake manifold for conversation's sake there's the uh transmission down there as well as all the uh, pieces but we'll worry about that later so let's get going. Let's get the intake on and uh, get this buttoned up. Okay, we set the intake manifold on. You can see we have a little bit of a uh, ultra black coming out. Remember, this is your gasket. So there's no use putting a half an inch bead on top of here. It won't really matter. Put enough to hold the gaskets in place, maybe a little bit around the water um, ports. Do your center. But just keep that in mind. That's your thickness. Remember, there's some ribs on top of it too, so and on the bottom. So take that into consideration, or even put your intake manifold on and take a look at it without it being torqued down and make sure you get the appropriate amount of silicone or uh, ultra black or gas to make or whatever it is you're using. And, uh, or you could just use these if you're just using a cast iron intake manifold if you like. It's totally up to you. We're going to get this bolted on. Remember, our center bolts all go through, not the end ones, to uh, the lifter valley, the oil. So we're going to put a little bit of uh, silver or uh, ultra black on them as well when we install them. Typically when you're doing that, you can, I'll just use ultra black and I'll just uh, do this with uh, each one of them. Make sure we have a little bit of uh, on each bolt and then I'll install them into the appropriate uh, bolt hole. All right, remember the inner uh, four bolts are all uh, into the lifter valley. Don't forget your uh, hooks if you want to put them back on. This one will have uh, nothing on it. There's nothing here. It's a blind hole at the end. So make sure the uh, middle bolts, they'll need to have a little bit of a sealant on them. You don't have to, but I, I like to just so I don't have oil come back over there, up, out of there over time. I use the bolts with the, uh, like the shoulder, the with the uh, step down washer end on any of the brackets and then I use the regular bolts in the middle and on the outsides so I hope that helps we're just going to uh, snug these down and then we'll give them a final torque
Okay, so we're back. So the last time we were uh, out here, we installed the water pump and the intake manifold. And then after that, I just cleaned and painted everywhere in here, just so it doesn't rust. It probably will over time, but who knows. Try and keep it clean. Um, today, we're just going to bolt on the valve covers right now. We'll put the grommets in as well. I suppose we should do the thermostat. And uh, we're going to start drilling out the exhaust manifolds. Okay, so depending on the valve cover gasket you're using, we're going to use cork. You might want to get some valve cover spreaders. You might want to use the, the rubber ones. It really doesn't matter to me what I use. In this situation, we've, uh, we've actually pounded these straight again. And this valve cover is surprisingly straight for whatever reason. I guess it wasn't uh, off and on the engine too many times. So because of that, I'm just going to use cork. Now, some people use windshield um, sealant, the yellow stuff, on the valve cover, then lay the gasket on. Other people use, uh, um, well, everybody uses something different. I, I use ultra black, and some people use the right stuff. But when I have a straight valve cover, see it doesn't even wobble on there, and a cork gasket, I'm just not going to use anything. Now, if it does leak, I'll probably regret that and wish I would have used something. But a lot of the time, in this situation, I'm not going to use anything. It's best that we don't over tighten anything here. What will happen over time when we, as they keep being over tightened, is they'll crack in the very bottom in here and they'll start leaking oil. But what you'll find with cork is once you tighten it down or snug it down and you go back around, it's going to be a little loose again, much like I explained with the oil pan gaskets or uh, the intake manifold. Now, don't crank it down to the point where you're denting the valve cover. But just give it a little twist every so often just to make sure it's tight and it's not really denting. And then the gasket's compressed and it's going to seal just fine. Anyway, let's get this on. As we talked about before, we have all of our parts cleaned up and ready to go. We're just simply going to set this on. Set the valve cover on. Line up these holes, push the gasket up all the way in and around. We look good. Let's get our fasteners. All right, sometimes your gasket might be off a little bit. I just use a little pick. I'll move it around so it's in the right spot. I'll use that driver because it's easy to control. Well, we don't want to strip any bolts while we're doing this. Okay, so when we're tightening, we're just going to do, like I say, a very little pressure at a time here. Okay. Yeah, they loosen up again pretty quickly. So, very little pressure. We don't want to dent the valve cover. And you can go after, over this a couple times after, and you'll probably find they're a little loose again.
just starting on the exhaust manifold now. Got the holes centered, got the first holes drilled, gonna keep going. Okay, so we got these drilled out and um, we ran a tap through them real quick or th cleaned the threads up. All right. We have these Dorman studs that we can, uh, we're going to throw in here. So these are uh, kind of like the replacement studs. Like whenever I look, looked it up, this is the replacement part number I was given. The number for the studs is um, 03147. Okay. Also, we have the long ones for the other side. Anyway, if anybody's wondering, I just drilled this out. I tried to center it, and I just went drill a bit bigger and bigger and bigger until I started to see threads. Or not see threads, but the indent for them. And I just started removing them with my little screwdriver. I didn't save any of the pieces, I don't think. Like, there's some, like, down here and stuff. And uh, I just remove them from the top and just tap them from the top. And then I just ran my uh, tap down there and uh, chased them out. And that would be the remnants of them there. So I hope that uh, helps anybody that's going through the same thing. Roughly an hour and a half, two hours to drill these and uh, get to this point.
okay, you guys have any mistake there? I bet I have to take off the back uh, spark plug wire protector, the heat shield. Just gonna uh, put this exhaust manifold in place. So basically, when you uh, put the dipstick in, and you have the bar across the top of the exhaust manifold, you may have a problem like I just did. So that was my uh, oversight. So I just wanted to film this that I, uh, I got wrong, so if anybody was following along, they would know. So now, I can just put the rest of the bolts in. I'm just going to fire that uh, heat protector back in there. And bolt it. Okay, let's get these bolts in here. We'll get the gasket set in. Nice thing about these exhaust manifolds is we don't have to spread them to get them together. Or to get the bolts in. They have these bars in here. The bad thing is... You forget to put everything together and the bars are in there. It's all good. We got her. Okay, at this point, we just want to throw some gaskets in. So, we'll uh, toss those in there. I trim off the uh, the third uh, access, or me, the, the third access hole. And, let's buzz those up. Don't tighten them all the way. Just make sure that we have everything seated in the right spot. All of our bolts are nice. No issues. All right. Go over them real quick. That little quarter inch ratchet doesn't have a lot of power, but it sure is nice to use just for basic stuff like that, right? And again, one last time. We can torque these. We can find the torque spec on them. I imagine they're 25 or something like that, being a 3 inch bolt. Okay, we'll just close a lot of this up here. We're pretty much done the build on this. We'll... Uh, we put the temperature sender in there. Let's give it a little bit of a little bit of sealant. We're using the factory senders that came with this uh, with this car. To the best of my knowledge, there was no issues with them at all. So. Guess we'll find out pretty soon. If we have a problem, we'll just deal with it. Okay. And then we have the oil pressure sending in it. Let's go back here. This one I'm not going to put any sealant on. I'm relatively confident it's fine. Typically, they'll leak out of the top if they have an issue. Okay. You want to be careful tighten them down. They're just a thin body. Everybody offers sockets for these. I know you don't like tightening these. Still do it by hand. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, I guess we're pretty much at the end of this uh, video for video number four. This is, uh, I guess, six videos in this series. We have the two disassembly videos and uh, the four uh, assembly videos. I would have liked to finish today. I just wanted to do the EGR, the breather, and this. But we have a couple parts we need to clean up still. I got the wrong EGR gasket. I thought I had a gasket for this and do not. And I don't have any plug wires. So when we do the uh, distributor, I would have liked to have done the plug wires. So what I'll do is a separate video. And I know there's probably 100 videos out there already about how to put your distributor in and uh, clock everything. 
but we'll do one anyway and we'll put the spark plug wires on and we'll get everything in order we'll uh put the rest rest these brackets and pulleys on we'll put the fuel line on we'll put the brake booster line on we'll get everything cleaned up we'll uh we'll do a quick video with the ultrasonic cleaner we'll do this uh carburetor it's been sitting for 30 years so the ultrasonic cleaner will do be the best bet for it and then we got a few more things to clean up here we'll clean up these bolts that bracket all the starter distributor we get everything ready to go on even the air cleaner is rusty on the inside so we'll get that blasted and repainted and uh we'll get it all ready to go and uh we'll continue on with it the only other thing we're waiting for here is for me to finish this transmission we just need to clean up these parts the case is ready to go so while we're waiting for these parts to be ordered for this we should be able to do uh rebuild the carburetor a simple transmission clean up a few parts and mate them together and get the car here and get it installed if anybody has any questions about this build please don't hesitate to ask it's been a lot of fun we went through uh, quite a few challenges doing this and uh, it'll be nice to see you run and go down the road and take it for a drive i hope everybody enjoyed this who watched it and uh i appreciate all the comments and uh and the views and uh we'll be back asap